Hey, what's going down, you hardcore and war-torn photography geeks? This is Sam, and I am back with you today on another episode, a quick episode, Flashback Friday. Uh, today, we are going to be taking a ride through the time machine to the year 1996, and we're going to be looking at uh, the cameras of that time. Now, uh, I'm sure that this is probably not what uh, some of you guys wanted and I do apologize and accept responsibility for that um, who was that the, the stones said you can't always get what you want on <laughs> no but you guys have been good man I am planning to give you guys everything uh, in good time what is what is that that they say when they have no excuse to, uh, in God's perfect timing Yes, everything will come to y'all in God's perfect timing. But today we're going to take a ride in the time machine to the year 1996. And let me tell you uh, what's it all about. Okay, so basically what sparked this episode today uh, was I was going through my boxes of stuff and getting rid of stuff. And I came across a whole bunch of photography magazines. Now, as you can see, these are the British photography magazines which I found very um, entertaining, especially back in those days. Uh, but I was about to throw them away, and I still am going to throw them away, but going through even one, uh, man, it was like a, like a wealth of information and uh, nostalgia, like a ride through a time machine. So I'm going to take you guys through one, and this is, it says photo answers. November 1996 Now I'm not gonna be talking about the magazine itself, so I hope I'm not violating any copyright laws or anything like that, but uh, When I was looking at this I was like looking at the pictures of the fireworks and I thought okay cool another boring episode So I could probably throw this one away. So I started turning the page first thing I saw was the advanced photo system a complete guide to the advanced photo system and uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but this is the advanced photo system pretty much was the biggest flop in the history of photography. Uh, it was actually a great concept. It was the superpowers got together. I think it was what Kodak and Fuji and Konica. I don't know. I don't know all the all the manufacturers. Minolta, I think. But they all decided, OK, let's get together and come up with this new film format which is smaller than 35 millimeters uh, but I mean that the film cartridges were locked and uh, I, I guess they thought they could make a lot of money off it uh, they offered options like panoramic you know the fake panoramic and uh, different different things but anyway uh, not to cut it down completely apparently the film itself was pretty good and in some cases comparable to 35 millimeters but the reason why the advanced photo system was such a flop was the timing. See, it came around like what, 1996, 1997? And guess what? That's also around the same time when the first wave of digital cameras came in. So that alone pretty much killed the advanced photo system. But anyway, that's the topic for another day. Let's take a look at some of the stuff we see here. What is this here? Kodak. Damn, man, you know, they, no wonder Kodak failed in the digital camera business, man, because, I mean, come on, who remembers this one? Oh, right here, the Nikon F5. 1005 pixel exposure metering system. Oh, this is great. This don't Now imagine living at a time when the Nikon F5 was actually current, a current camera. All right, so yeah, so this is a uh, ad for the Nikon F5 let's see what it says F5 step ahead Nikon I could have sworn there was an ad for the Nikon F5 that says imported from the future and I thought that was a brilliant uh, thing because it really was absolutely true because out of the F5 came the F100 the Nikon D1 the D1X D1H so that was definitely imported from the future but anyway the Nikon F5 was definitely the top 35 millimeter camera in 1996. I'm not gonna go through all this here. Let's see. All right, let me continue. Nobody wants to look at the. Nobody wants. To, nobody has time to read the photo clinic. Oh, what's this? Oh, Pentax. 
Pentax Z was a MZ5, which is otherwise the ZX5 or Z, ZX5 and some like that. Uh, so apparently at that time it was current. Can you imagine this thing? I don't know how much it cost back then, maybe three, four hundred dollars. And nowadays you can probably get it for like what twenty-five bucks. Sometimes I always I always see these cameras as is on KEH for like five dollars. So uh, they don't they apparently haven't stood the test of time. I mean, it's not a bad camera, really. I actually have one of those $5 cameras. The problem is the chinzy body. Plastic, like it just feels so plasticky. I guess it's like the Rebel, Canon Rebel series. So it was, it definitely was not a winner. Oh, what do we have here? The Canon Elan. The Canon EOS 50E, otherwise known as the Elan, and the EOS 5, otherwise known as the A2E. Well, I had I had an A2E and it served me well for many years until I had that problem with the mode dial, which is very common on those cameras. But yeah, this is bringing me back some memories, man. Good stuff. Fireworks. I mean, I love fireworks. I'm just not really all that interested in taking pictures of fireworks. Oh, what is this? The Canon? No, the Casio QV10A. This is the first digital camera with an LCD. I actually have an article on this camera. Uh, in the blog, uh, I'll put it. I'll put it in a link for you guys. But uh, yeah, I mean, very basic camera. I couldn't even hook it up to a computer because it needed an SCSI cable or something like that. But yeah, that's definitely interesting, especially in 1996. Oh, what do we have here? Minolta 500 SI. As you can see, guys, this was back in the time when film actually ruled uh, the world. So it's not like something that's hip you know that's hip today where you if you're shooting a film camera you're hip this was normal this so that's why these cameras were really boring like the 500 si i mean they were great pictures takers but they were just i mean not they're not interesting you know what i mean Let's see what else we got here we we're almost out of time here oh the like of mini lux oh my goodness mini lux what can i tell you there's a lot of things i could tell you about the like a mini lux but i don't have the time today but i promise you we'll get back to the like of mini lux Setting up a dark room. Okay, well that's interesting. I don't have time for that though today, but uh, we'll read it. The Vivitar version of the Super Zoom. Those Super Zooms were very popular back in the 1990s. Well, let's skip through all these ads and see what else we could find. Oh, biannual show sees bevy of new photo gear. Wow, let's take a look. This is what we love. Oh my goodness. Look at that, all the stuff that you love. Leica R8. Rico GR1. I don't know if this is the stylus, uh, the, the uh, Miju. I don't, I'm not sure. But uh, I need my glasses. But uh, yeah, man, these things were current back then, you know? Instead of being the classics that they are today, they were actually current. It's a lot of boring ads. So, man, don't forget this is a time which the internet pretty much was non existent. I mean, I think it was around, but it wasn't anywhere near what it is today near the capacity and uh these print magazines were still uh the kings and it's easy to see why they had to go out of business i'm not sure if this one is out of business but it's easy to see why because it's hard to compete with today's internet uh, world but this is how i used to get my information guys right here right well i hope you guys enjoyed that uh trip down memory lane through the time machine you know, I enjoyed it myself, actually. Uh, I think I'll probably do another episode of that because I really uh, had a good time with that one. But I am well aware that uh, this is not really what you guys want because you guys want the cameras. And I am going to give that to you. I just want to say one thing, though. Um, you know, after a while, doing this YouTube thing really burns you out, man. I mean, and I'm not even a high volume YouTuber. So I could see why some of the folks that I enjoyed watching, some of them have disappeared. I mean, I don't know if you guys uh, know Forest Hill Film Lab. You know what happened to that guy? It really burns you out. So, you know, you really, in the beginning, you think that, oh, this is great. I'm gonna make a YouTube channel and it's gonna be a lot of fun. But actually, it's a lot of work. It's the editing, you know, sometimes I have to do retakes because I feel like I didn't say the things right. So it's not all that fun, but I want to give it to you guys because you guys are the best. But 
I definitely know what you guys want. So with that, I'm just going to say that I will catch you guys next time on the camera legend.com. Oh, YouTube.